Karim wiped his sweaty forehead with his sleeve. Mr. Johnson's unruly lawn was tamed at last. At the end of winter, Karim had outgrown his old bike. He was already as tall as his dad. To save up for a super speed star X and a matching helmet if he made enough money, he'd been doing odd jobs all Ramadan, watering Mr. Khan's plants while he traveled to visit his son in Pakistan, buying groceries for Miss Donaldson while she recovered from a broken leg, and washing Mr. Adler's muddy car after he drove up to the mountains for a hiking trip. But this last job had been the hardest, especially while fasting. Here's your ten dollars, Mr. Johnson said. My wife's going to be thrilled when she sees this. I haven't mowed this beast in three months. Thanks, Miss Johnson, Kareem said, sliding the bill into his pocket. Call me if you have any other chores that need doing. Just as Kareem arrived home, his dad called from the kitchen. After time, Kareem was starving. He nearly dove head first into the lentil soup kashari and roasted chicken his mom had cooked for their evening meal breaking his fast had never felt so good ah can you please take two seconds to say bismillah before stuffing your face mom said oops kareem said with stuffed chipmunk chicks bismillah kareem noticed Dad tapping his pencil against a notepad full of illegible scribbles. What's wrong, Dad? Karim asked. You seem distracted. Dad sighed. I have designer's block. It's like writer's block, except for graphic designers. I just can't figure out what angle to take for this company's advertising campaign. My pitch is on Monday. What do you have so far? Karim asked. Dad cleared his throat. Outstride Biking Equipment Limited. Everything you need for a great ride. Dad, that's so basic, said Karim. I know, groaned Dad. Okay, brainstorm with me. What's the first word that comes to mind when I say biking? Athletes, races, Olympics? Kareem said, The Olympics? That could actually work. Dad furiously scribbled something onto his notepad. So Kareem, I ran into Kim from across the hall today, mom said casually changing the subject. Her son, Sean, is starting a paper route tomorrow morning. Oh no! Karim could see the wheels turning in mom's head. She'd been trying to get him to hang out with Sean for two weeks just because he was the new kid in class. Sean seemed nice enough in school, but Karim already had friends. I volunteered your services. Mom tucked her hair behind her ears. Sean still doesn't know the neighborhood that well. You can show him all the shortcuts on his first day. Karim groaned. But why? It's not my paper route. I've been doing so many chores for bike money. All I want to do is sleep in tomorrow. I know, said mom, but it's the considerate thing to do and it's just for one morning. Kareem could tell from the determined look on mom's face that she wouldn't let this go. Fine. Kareem's mom nudged him awake at 5 a.m. 
time for Suhar, she whispered. And you're meeting Sean in half an hour. Kareem rubbed his eyes and sat up in bed. God, I'd better get a pile of good deed credits for this. At the kitchen table, Kareem inhaled fill, pita bread, and yogurt before call to fuzzer prayer. A big stack of letters sat on the counter. Karim, something came for you in the mail yesterday. I think it's from Tara, said mom. Karim's grandma was the best. She only visited once a year, but she was always sending him funny cards, old photos, and newspaper clippings that made her laugh. He ripped the envelope open and pulled out a purple eat greeting card. Two crisp green $20 bills slipped out and fluttered to the ground. $40! shouted Karim, setting the card down. Do you know what this means? No more chores. I can finally buy my bike. He jumped around the room as though he were bouncing on a giant trampoline. Mom opened the card and read Tata's message out loud. Dear Kareem, Arli Eid Mubarak Habibi, Did you know your name means generous? Think about doing something generous with this money for Eid Wilia, love, Tata. Karim stopped. Wait, what does that mean? Well, lots of people won't have an elaborate eat celebration like we will, mom said. Maybe that money can bring some happiness to another family. Karim crossed his arms and stood quietly for a moment. I've been working so hard for a new bike. I deserve this money more than anyone. Anyway, mom shrugged. Tata sent the money to you, so you decide for yourself. I've decided to generously buy myself the best Eid gift ever. Karim did a perfect cartwheel, crammed the bills into his pocket and twirled out the door. So, your mom forced you to come on my paper route with me, eh? Sean smirked as he unlocked his bike outside their building. His oversized Montreal Canadiens baseball hat covered most of his forehead. Yeah, kinda. I was already awake for Suhar though, Kareem said. That's the meal we eat before we start fasting. Cool. Well, Thanks for coming anyway, said Sean. No problem, Kareem grunted. So, are you a Leafs fan? Sean asked. Because if you are, we can't be friends. Nah, Kareem replied. Huck isn't my thing, but I am a Raptors fan. Sean chuckled as he stacked what looked like 50 newspapers into his bike basket. All right, I can deal with that. Aren't those heavy? Karim asked. Yeah, but I'm used to it. I had a paper route in Montreal before I moved here. Sean said. The basket makes it easier to manage, even if I just push the bike instead of riding today. The dawn light inched up the horizon as Sean and Kareem made their way through the delivery list. Each time they stopped at a house, Sean walked a few steps into the front yard and carefully tossed a newspaper onto the porch. Then Kareem impatiently crossed the house off the list. The faster they finished, the faster Kareem could grab the money he'd saved and get to the bike shop. Halfway through the route, the boys came up to a house surrounded by a chain-link fence. 
two fat recycling bins set in the middle of the sidewalk. Sean pushed his bike onto the quiet road and parked it at the curb in front of the bins. Newspaper in hand, he walked toward the gate. But he hesitated when he saw a clumsy handwritten note taped to a tiny doghouse on the lawn. Be aware of dog. Just as Sean's hand touched the edge of the fence, a chihuahua lunged out of the doghouse and yipped so loudly that both Sean and Kareem jumped backward. They collided with each other, then like dominoes knocked down the recycling bins and Sean's bike. Ah, yelled Kareem, stupid dog. How could such a loud sound come out of such a tiny body? Ah, I've seen way worse dogs on my other paper route, Sean said, standing up and brushing the dust off his pants. At least this one's behind a fence. Let's pick up all the stuff before the owners notice. Kareem righted the bins and collected some of the things that had fallen out of them. Crash! Kareem and Sean whipped their heads around. A rusty grey car screeched to a halt right where Sean's bike had been. The bike slid across the pavement. An angry balding man threw open his car door. Hey! Get that piece of junk out of the road! You hit my bike! Sean yelled. He ran toward the mess of twisted bike parts and scattered newspapers. Blame yourself, the man retorted, examining the front of his car. It's not my fault you left your bike in the middle of the road. You should be glad it didn't damage my car. Without another word, the man jumped into his car and sped off. Sean lowered himself onto his knees next to his bike. His head hung down as he examined the bent wheel and twisted handlebar. I can't ride it like this, he said. I'm so sorry, Sean. Hey, it doesn't look that bad, Karim lied. Oh man, it looks totally wrecked. Karim. Do you think you could what? Do you think you could finish my paper route for me while I wheel the bike home? There are only seven houses left. Karim froze. How could he ask me to finish his paper route? I shouldn't even be here at all. Ah, uh, I don't think that's a good idea, Karim replied grasping for an excuse. I'm probably going to make mistakes. Can't we just go straight home? I'll get in trouble if I don't finish the route, Sean said. He looked around uncertainly. I guess I can just leave the bike on the sidewalk and we'll come get it when we're done. Sean quickly collected the remaining newspapers stuffing them into his messenger bag and then dragged the damaged bike onto the sidewalk. They walked on in silence. The neighborhood was still asleep and everything was quiet except for the sound of a distant rumbling garbage truck. After Sean delivered the final paper on his route, the boys sprinted back toward the house with the chain link fence. Like clockwork, the chihuahua started barking right as they turned the corner and spotted the house. But something wasn't right. The bike was gone. They frantically searched behind the recycling bins and between the bushes. We left it right here, Sean panted. Where is it? Do you think someone stole it? Karim 
lifted the lids of the recycling bins and peered inside. Oh God, no! This can't be happening. The bins are empty. He gulped. The truck must have come by while we were gone. They probably thought the bike was junk too. Sean let out a groan and kicked the car hard. He pulled his baseball cap over his face and sat down next to the empty bins. Karim shoved his hands into his pockets. An uncomfortable sadness tugged at his throat. This wasn't supposed to happen. I was just going to show him some shortcuts, then split. Hey, Karim said, awkwardly. Maybe your mom will get you a new bike? No. She spent all her savings on stuff for the new apartment, Sean replied. My dad won't help either. He still lives in Montreal and doesn't like it when I ask him for money. Ah, what was I thinking? That was such a dumb thing to say. The boys trudged home in silence. Let me know what your mom says, Curry mumbled as they stepped into the elevator. Sean replied with a low grunt, K. At home, Karim threw himself onto his bed and yawned. His whole body felt strangely itchy and he couldn't get the image of Sean out of his head. It's not my fault his bike got thrown away. It was just an accident. But every time Karim tried closing his eyes, all he saw was Sean sitting on the sidewalk with his baseball cap over his face. On Monday morning, just five days before Eid, Karim clipped his helmet, straps shut and rode his new bike to school. Mom had taken him shopping over the weekend. She'd chosen a sparkly Eid banner and gold balloons at Purdy City. And Karim had gotten his bike at Canadian Tire. The best part was standing at the store register and finding out that the bike was on sale. So he didn't even have to use the $40 Tata had sent him. Karim planned to go back to the store after school to buy a new helmet. His old one was scoffed and didn't match the shiny new bike. Just as Karim had anticipated, the ride to school was as smooth as butter. A cool breeze hit his face and hugged the back of his neck. This is the life, 